Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well, we got a bit of a problem here tonight. The furnace does not want to stay running. Uh, it's the first real cold night of the year. And notice the house is starting to get a little bit colder, but the furnace will try to start. The flame will come on and then it'll be on for just a couple of seconds and it'll go out. And then eventually the furnace will just lock itself out from trying too many times to get started. So we're going to take a look and see what we can figure out here. I have a pretty good idea what's going on. But to start with, went ahead and took out these two screws right here, this one, the one on the other side, and we're going to take this bottom panel off right here to expose the burner area. So if we remember back from the other furnace video that we did, kind of the process of the furnace starting up is going to be the first thing. The fan is going to come on, the exhaust fan is going to come on. Then it's going to purge anything, any extra fumes that might be in the, the burn chamber there. Then once that's done, it's going to turn on the igniter, the hot plate igniter, it's going to warm up and you'll see a red glow. Then it's going to introduce the gas. Then the flame will start. And then after it senses the flame, then the blower will start once it gets warmed up. That's the blower that blows the air out into the house. So that's kind of the process just quickly of how it works. So where our failure is happening is as soon as the gas is introduced and the flame starts, it seems like it's not sensing that there's a flame to move on to the next step. So that leads us right to the flame sensor. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that and try to clean it. Those should probably be cleaned once a year or so. This one hasn't been cleaned in about five or six years probably. Um, so we need to take care of that. So let's go ahead and look in here and see what we can see. So there's the inducer fan. And then you can see a bunch of wires. And right back there in the back corner, there's a little sensor that has a single wire to it and a screw. So we're going to go back there and take that screw out and see what's attached to it. So we remove that screw. We'll go ahead and pull this out. So this little rod, you want to be kind of careful with it. But you can see it's got a lot of uh, white stuff on there, some kind of deposits. And it's kind of discolored a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and clean that off. We want to use something that's not going to scratch it real bad. So we don't want to use like a sandpaper or something like that. Uh, one of the best things that works really well is like a little Scotch-Brite pad. But you want to use one that's really light and also doesn't have any detergents or chemicals on it. So I've got a brand new, just a little cheapo pad and we're going to wipe it down. So this is just a little cheapo pad. I think it came in a pack from the dollar store. It has a sponge on one side. But the side we're going to use here is kind of this little scrubby side. So we're going to go ahead and wipe down this little rod. So here we've got our little scrubby pad and our little sensor. And we're just going to kind of rub that lightly and see if we can get a bunch of that stuff off. You can see there's some white stuff already on the, the little pad. And like I said, we don't want to use anything that's going to scratch this or get too aggressive on this. I've also read online that you can use like a dollar bill and some people say you can use sandpaper, a whole bunch of different abrasive things on there. But what I've been told from an HVAC guy is you don't want to use anything more aggressive than this little green scrubby pad. And for some reason you also want to avoid ones that have chemicals on them. So that looks pretty good right there. So now we're just going to take this rod, put it back in and put the screw back in. So we've got that sensor put back in, and now we'll go ahead and see if it starts up. Okay, so we just turned the thermostat on, it's calling for heat. The inducer fan just turned on. Then in a second, back here, we should start to see an orange glow. There's the orange glow, heating up. And then we should hear the gas valve in just a second and see fire. There's the fire. And you can see the igniter just went out, so the orange went away. The furnace is gonna warm up for 30 seconds to a minute or so and then the blower motor is going to come on. And you can see now the fire is staying on, so the furnace is sensing that the fire is running now. 
whereas it wasn't before. So we've taken care of the issue. So now we're gonna go ahead and just put the cover back on. You can hear the blower motor just kicked on. We'll get this all closed up. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember you can't finish a project without getting started.